Good Monday morning, everyone. Today is October 21st, 2019, and here's today's Monday Morning Minute. For today, we will look back at last week's readings and your responses to those readings. And then for this week, we have the entire week just to focus on our next big assignment, our Classroom Culture Toolkit. That is due this Sunday, October 27th. Um, there are no assigned readings for this week. There are no assigned critical responses for this week. You have the entire time really just to focus on this one assignment. So looking back to last week, we talked about the importance of engaging instruction in terms of managing a classroom. And per usual, you all had really interesting ideas and questions and insights. And so I've brought a couple of these for, for your and our consideration, I suppose. So starting with Cassie, who writes, during my student teaching practicum, I was reminded by each host teacher the importance of closing a lesson. It helps wrap up any loose ends and students are offered a chance to ask questions or recite their learning for checking. I found it is a good way to help prepare for the next day of classes and that the teacher can make decisions based off the responses in this section. I like how the authors made sure to include it because it can be difficult for new teachers to include a strong closing due to time constraints. Cassie, you're so right. <laughs> I can speak from my own personal experience in the classroom as a teacher, and then also um, anecdotally when I go out to classrooms currently. And yeah, if a lesson is kind of running over time, the first thing to go is that reflection activity that the teacher has planned. And yet, that's one of the most important pieces of a lesson um, for all of the reasons that Cassie points out. It's a way to reflect on the learning, to help students realize what they have learned that particular day, and it primes the pump for learning the next day. So it is a really crucial part of our instruction. I wish it wasn't the one that was most often neglected, and maybe that's kind of a lesson for all of us, those of us who are planning lessons, to make sure that that reflective piece at the end is always um, accounted for in given time. So thanks, Cassie. And Abby is responding to the case study of Miss Jackson and the conundrum of group work that you all had the opportunity, if you wanted to, um, to weigh in on. And so Abby writes, the basics of psychology can be applied to Miss Jackson's situation to explain why group work causes behavioral problems and poor work ethic. On the other hand, groups can be wonderful ways to socialize, share ideas, and brainstorm solutions. To foster ethical and responsible grouping, Ms. Jackson could take care to outline specific assignments for each group member. Each group member could be required to pose X number of ideas, and other group members could be assigned to challenge their partner's concepts. Groups, when well thought out, can work. Like these chapters suggest, the problem is that groups are often unorganized, excuse me, are often sporadic, last resorts of unplanned or unorganized teaching. Again, so much yes, Abby, and I think we've all seen it, um, those of us who are, are in classrooms currently. Um, yeah, group works. I like that we're talking about group works in the same domain that we're talking about ethics, because um, I'm really interested in ethical, in the ethical implications of teaching and learning. And group work, I think, is one where we can all kind of latch on and we can recognize from our own experiences as perhaps being the person in the group who did the most work, um, how frustrating it is to be in that position, right? And so we can empathize with our students and we certainly don't want to put our students in that same position. So Abby here is pointing out very specific strategies that, that we can use when we're designing our groups, right? We can be very intentional about who um, is in each of our groups, but then also just to make sure that the workload is equitable and that everyone is, is pulling their weight, so to speak. There have been a lot of really interesting conversations about the topic of group work. And um, yeah, so I encourage you to check those all out because there are some really fantastic suggestions there. So thank you all so much for your participation. As always, it's always a pleasure to read um, your ideas and also um, to look at how you're helping each other think through problems of practice. All very cool. So for this week, we have our Classroom Culture Toolkit. A few weeks ago, I talked about this, um, and I'll just kind of go over that again uh, in case it's helpful. So you can download this assignment description through Blackboard. And again, the idea here is that we are identifying an area of growth for ourselves with regard to classroom management. 
And when I say area of growth, um, I really mean, honestly, any area of interest for you, any any area that relates to classroom management that you would like to, to know more about. I've posed a few possible questions slash areas up here in case that's helpful. Again, this is just, this is not meant to be exhaustive. You can really think about any of the thousands of topics that it feels like we've covered so far in this semester and take a deep dive into one of them. So you identify that area. You then will do some research and compile a toolkit of eight to 10 different resources that speak to that particular area of growth that you've identified. So um, we're using a very postmodern, um, I guess, rendering of this idea of resources. It can be, you know, cool apps that you find that, that target that particular area, tips and strategies. It can be articles that address this, um, any organizational techniques, any cool trackers that are out there. Basically, basically, again, anything that relates to the topic that you've identified that could, in theory, help you or a colleague improve that particular area of your practice. So the toolkit is those eight to 10 resources. And then I'm also asking for a 300 to 500 word executive summary. And in that summary, that should be sort of the first page of your toolkit is how I envision it. Um, and it should go over your topic and also kind of summarize what you've learned from your research. Please also include um, relevant research and um, and theory that we've come across from our textbooks. Make sure that like what we've read in, in our course is somehow represented there. And I think that should be pretty easy to do. But if you have trouble with that or you're, you're confused about that requirement, please do let me know. I also wanted to say that this can actually take many different forms. It could be just kind of a Word document if you want. Um, it could also be sort of a PowerPoint presentation or a Prezi. Um, I'm really open in terms of formatting. So if you have a cool idea, go for it. I hope that this is pretty straightforward, but again, if you do have questions, make sure to let me know. And just as a reminder that this toolkit will be due on Sunday by 11.59 p.m. via Blackboard. So just go to the Assignments tab and then click on the Classroom Culture Toolkit folder. That is all for this week. Thank you all for being awesome, and I'm excited to review your toolkits. Have a great week.